You're gonna to like today's video. Have your college and college lecturers been misleading you about lighting circuits? We'll get to that in the video. On the channel, we've looked at lighting circuits in the form of the three plate method, where we had one way, two way, and intermediate switching. Probably something you do in the first six, seven weeks when you're at college. I went on and developed it to look at the two plate method, a method commonly used in installations when there's numbers of down lights. And we looked at one way, two way, and intermediate. And then I built this rig here to help you when you're looking at AM2 and AM2S. And this is wired through the switch. And again, it's two way and intermediate switching of a lighting point. But that brings me back to the original part. Have you been misled? I'm gonna convert this back to a simple one-way lighting circuit, maybe something similar to what you got in a bedroom. Switch at the door and one lighting point, and I'm gonna turn it then into two-way and two-way and intermediate in a really short space of time. So I'm gonna get busy. And let's come back when I've got it back to a one-way lighting circuit. So I'm gonna step back in time. I've gone back to a one-way lighting circuit, probably the first lighting circuit we ever carry out in an electrical workshop. So let's see. We've got a one gang, one way switch. Yay, when we're turning it on and off, that's probably the first lighting circuit we've done. We get stretched and go on and do two way and then two way and intermediate. And how do we do that? We end up changing this one gang, one way switch for a two way switch. We introduce a three core and another switch, two way. And then we have a configuration where we have an intermediate switch and these three core cables between them, but not today. However, there is a few things we've got to bear in mind before we go on to change this switch for the magic one, which will come next, is that I've replaced my shallow depth. There are about 16 mil lighting patrices that we use at college. I've changed it for the ones that we're likely to be using for socket outlets. So at least a depth of 25 mil. In the real world in industry, you're likely to be chopping light switch boxes in that are already 25 mil or using dry line boxes, which are greater than 25 mil. And therefore, this inline receiver we're gonna see in a minute works perfectly. So this is it here. Still boxed up, because I'm keeping it secret for the time being. So this inline receiver works on kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Now I'm sure we've heard that before in our electrical science and principles lesson. Kinetic means when motion. So when there is motion, it creates energy, and that energy will send a signal, and that will be a radio frequency signal in order to operate the switches when we introduce them. It's made by Quinetic, so that's the brand that I'm using, this inline receiver. And all we have to do, find the boxes at the right depth, 25 mil deep or bigger, is take off your one-way switch and replace it with this one, and then you can pair an additional five switches that have no cables and they have no batteries. They work on this Kinetic energy. However, before we do change that switch out in the real world, you're going to need to produce your voltage indicators, your proving units, your locking off devices, your signs, etc. And I've done the safe isolation procedure many times on the channel. So let's make sure that we're working safely. I'm just going to disconnect mine from out of here and move it into a central position so I can show you the connections in this inline receiver. So if you're thinking about it, you might be thinking, hang on a minute, when I've seen this, I can go on and change maybe the switch in my bedroom, which is just one at the door, turning on my light. I could change it with an inline receiver from Quinetic, and therefore I could have other switches in my bedroom controlling the lights, and you are right, but let's make sure we work safely and do that safe isolation procedure. As I said, we've shown it on the channel many times. So I'm gonna swap this one over, and I'm gonna show you nice and close, I'm gonna lay it flat, and then we're gonna go through the pairing process, and I'm gonna change this one-way lighting circuit over to two-way, and then two-way and intermediate. Safe isolation been carried out, and now you're ready to change, in this case, a one gang, one way switch. So we've got our permanent line and our switching line. We can see it's not a neutral. It's identified with a brown sleeving as our switching line. And what's brilliant about these inline switches from Quinetic is they do not need a neutral. So I've got exactly what I need, a permanent line and a switching line, and I'm gonna replace this switch for one that has a receiver in it. The receiver has to be powered, so hence we need a supply to it. It's the other switches that will be working on the kinetic energy when we introduce them. So we'll open it up, and we'll get it out of the packet. Something quite satisfying about opening new stuff. And there we have it. So that's our switch. So we've got our two connections here and here. So we're gonna have our permanent line and our switching line connected. We've just got to pull the front off in order to screw it down. So disconnect my permanent line conductor, obviously it comes out of there, and then my switching line conductor. You'll notice that the box is deeper and I've had to change it for a deeper box. This is a single socket box, hence there's no connection for the CPC, so I've had to use a Wago 221 connector to hold that in place. And again, in, in the real world, that box is like to be a dry line box or a, a flushed in metal box into the wall. And now we've got to make our connections. And as you can see, it. we've got an L connection for our permanent line, 
and our L1 for our switching line connections. We have to separate the two. So this has got to just be a bit careful just to pull the switch front off the body. So it should just come away with a gentle little wiggle as you go. So I've separated those two and that gives me my two fixing screws when I need them in order to hold it into position. So I've just got to make my connections on the back now. So L being my permanent line connection in like there. And then my switching line, remember that is not a neutral. It doesn't need a neutral, which makes it fantastic. Lots of times there aren't neutrals at switches. So I'm going back, when I've got this connected, this will be exactly the same as it was before. A one-way switch operating that light. And we'll introduce some more switches. So we lay that into position onto the box and then we can screw it down. Then we can reintroduce that curve. It is important you get it on the right way around because obviously you want down to be on for the switch. The bit in the back that we've connected to is our receiver. So then we'll be able to pair some more switches to it. But let's see it first of all, once we've got it back together as a one-way switch. That's held into position. Got to bring in our cover and just reposition that back onto the, to the switch, get it to clip into the right place. And there we go. So, we're, so that's the switching mechanism. Press it down to turn the light on and off. So we'll power it back up and we'll see it as a one-way switch first. So that was super simple. And now we've just got a one-way switch. So that's fine, but we said we want to introduce other switches. We're not going to use cables. We're going to use this kinetic energy that sends a radio frequency that's picked up by here where the receiver sits in order to turn these on and off. So we'll see how to pair some other switches in the next part. These switches need to have at least a five watt load. I've got a seven watt lamp on mine, but if you think you've got a fancy light fitting with more than one lamp in it, five watts is fine. So that's the lowest wattage range that it will switch. It will switch up to 600 watts of LED or 900 watts of load. But we're interested in obviously now the pairing process and see how simple that is. So I've introduced another very similar switch. You could stick this or screw this to the wall. My daughter's left this loose on her bedside table in order that she can turn her lights on and move it around, which I think is also a nice touch. So you could use some tape on the back here and stick it to your wall, or you could fix it into position. But we're just gonna have it freestanding at the minute. But at the minute, it doesn't do anything. So it's not operating the lights, but this one is. So we've got to bring it into pairing process, which is about a six second hold. So push it and hold it for about six seconds and then it should start to flash. When it starts that flashing process, it will be in pairing mode. There we go, so we're in pairing mode. We take the switch we want to pair, and we operate that switch. That uses kinetic energy. And you now see I'm turning that light on and off with these two switches. So that's become two-way switched by pairing that switch. So this switch now can be taken away it can be 25 uh, meters indoors. So that's with obstacles like doors and walls and that in a way. I think our bedroom is going to be under 25 meters uh, in the area size and a distance of 80 meters outside. In other words, in free air. So I don't think we're going to have an outside one, but these are IP rated. So I suppose you could, but I'm looking at this with this receiver being installed inside where there's a one way switch allowing you to put two way switching in. Look how simple that was. That's something they don't teach you at college, isn't it? That that's now two-way switched. How does this work? There is no cables. There are no batteries in here. By operating the switch, it creates kinetic movement, which creates energy, which sends a radio frequency through the air, which is picked up by the receiver. And the receiver changes it from either on or off, depending on the position it was last in. So we come back on, off, We've now got two-way switching. They do some different designs of these switches. I've got another one here, very similar but different color. So again, there's a switch there, but it's gray. We've got um, this one here, which is quite handy, which is a grid switch. So again, this is a grid switch, and we've often seen, especially on site, things like this yoke here or grid mounting frame, and we can position those in there. So that could be paired to it. And that's quite handy if you had a two gang version of this and had a standard light switch, and then you introduced a quinetic switch for something else in the room. And I've also done that in installations as well. And possibly my favorite, believe it or not, that is also a switch you can pair, which looks remarkably like most people's key fobs in order to open the car. Okay, so we can pair those. So I'm gonna make it two-way next uh, and intermediate. So we've got two-way. So I'll introduce the gray one to give us three switches. So let's just confirm we have two-way. 
So how do we set it into pairing mode? Exactly the same as we did before. We press and hold for approximately six seconds until it starts blinking. And there we go, so about six seconds and then that blinking process will go. So it starts to flash. And then you come in with your other switch you want to pair. And you now find, if I move these out of the way, we can go on, off, on, off, on, off. That is fantastic. So effectively, we have now got two-way and intermediate switching. Well, we haven't got any cables between them. We're sending that radio frequency picked up by the receiver by using movement of kinetic energy to send that signal. No batteries, no cables. So that's now got three switches. Shall we pair the key fob one just to, just to have a look at it? It's exactly the same process. Press and hold. Press and hold for three uh, for six seconds until we get that where it starts to, to flash or blink. It's into pairing mode. We bring in our key fob. So we go key fob, switch, 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 key fob. All of those are paired and we could go on and, and continue the process on. So at college, you're taught one way, two way and intermediate and it's vitally important. You're also taught the two plate, the three plate and the wired through the switch method of wiring lighting circuits we've shown on the channel. But out there in industry, there is nothing stopping us using this sort of system here to quickly change in a bedroom, in a, a I don't know, any house uh, room that you could choose. But I'm always thinking of the bedroom. You move your bed around, all of a sudden the switch isn't in the right place. You want a two way switch. All you've got to do is change the switch at the door and introduce one of the other switches and you can have up to five other switches. So in this case, we've got four switches. So it's this switch and five others, which makes six, okay, that you can have in that area in order to use those. So that's by installing a Quinetic inline receiver, replacing your one-way switch, just a simple changing over of the connections and we add permanent line and switching line. That's your receiver and pairing these switches in here. And as always, I hope this video has been some fun and been some help.